Want to know the secret to building a multi-million celebrity-driven brand? You start scrappy. Melinda Spiegel started Melinda Maria in her apartment selling her jewelry at Starbucks and now has a multi-eight-figure brand and her jewelry is on so many A-list celebrities. And I love her story. In fact, Melinda Maria was someone who I went and chased after I heard her at an event. She was walking out to her car and I followed her because I wanted her to speak at Brilliant. Thankfully, she said yes, but one of the things we share and one of the attributes to really building a brand is not waiting for things to come to you, doing the work, showing up when you don't feel like it. And Melinda Maria shares so much of her story in this incredible interview. I know if you are hesitant about being seen, if you don't always feel like showing up, I want you to know you are not alone, but if you want to build a brand of impact, that is all part of the process. So get ready for a very inspired interview with my new dope friend, Melinda Spiegel. All right, gorgeous Melinda Maria, how are you today? Where are you today? Uh, I'm in my bedroom, actually. Yeah, COVID has been, you know, made me used to working at home. And so I work at home twice a week and I'm in the office two to three times a week. Oh, that is so nice. Do you love that mix? I do. It's yeah. the perfect mix for me. Perfect. Mondays, Wait. I'm like in my sweats, catching up, like organizing, doing my, you know, just figuring out what the week's going to look like and catching up. And then, and I'm just don't put a stitch of makeup on. And I love that. And then Tuesdays uh, I'm in the office doing just like running calls, checking in with my team, you know, updating stuff. We're taking a lot of like meetings with all the different teams. Wednesdays is more like, okay, let's look at big picture stuff. Where are we at with more of like initiatives? I film half the day. Thursdays. Every I, week you film every week. Yeah. Did you all hear that? She films every week, every week. And we bank content. So no, I film at least a day and a half a week. Yeah. Of content. I didn't realize when I started it, that I was going to be the face of the brand, <laughs> but like, <laughs> become, you know, a quarter, at least a quarter of my 20, 30, 5% of my job, sometimes more. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then you know, Fridays, I try to, you know, not kill myself working so hard, but yeah, Monday through Thursdays are crazy. And Fridays I come in a little late. I do plotting in the morning and I take a little bit of time and then I work the rest of the day, but yeah. Oh, sounds so nice. Remind me how old your kids are. You have three. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, eight, 11 and 12. So you got your hands full. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No question. Anyone that's a working mom understands like it's crazy being in. It is so crazy. You know, the in control of three people's lives and then your own and, you know, your job. And it's, it's like almost impossible. Right. I think I've just decided that balance is a myth <laughs> and, and you have no. to show up and just do your best each day. I think yeah. a lot of the women in the inspired living community, Melinda, probably feel the same way. You know, they have this great yeah. vision for their life and they're super ambitious and yet they're a mom. Any just any tips on that? We're just going to dive right in. Is there anything that you have discovered in your schedule or in your life that has helped you like not feel guilty about doing you and running this really successful business yeah. and still be. Um, I guess when I started off, cause I, I stepped back uh, and let somebody else run the company when I had my second. And I was like, I'm just going to phone it in and just sort of keep it alive and, you know, be a mom at home. And, um, you know, that was tough on actually tough on the business, but it was a really conscious decision that I made to be present as a more present as a parent. Um, and I, you know, so I felt a lot of guilt going back. So when I, my third, uh, started preschool, I was like, I'm going to go back full time. I'm going to be the CEO and I'm going to work like crazy. Um, and I had a lot of guilt with my third. I didn't pick him up from preschool almost ever, maybe once a week, maybe I did drop him off because it was early in the morning. I went straight to work. You know, I didn't get to do as many volunteer things with him as I would yeah. have liked with the other kids. Um, but he's the most independent of my kids, I think, you know, at his age, my other kids are pretty independent now, but um, 
I realize it's, it's good for them. Like mm-hmm. I see my friends that the whole world revolves around the kids. Like they pick up their favorite drink and their favorite thing. And they are right there with the bus gets done. You know, when they're always are at the bus stop and they're always, and their kids I see are a little more dependent on them. And I yeah. ultimately as a parent, I think, how is this going to serve them when I let them free as an adult? And I always make those kind of decisions based on that. And I really think working shows them, you know, work ethic, how to work hard shows them. I have stressful days too. There are big struggles. There are failures. I definitely, my husband and I both let them in on like big things or initiatives that were failures of it. Like my husband's a director and a producer and he pitches shows all the time that he asks the kids their opinions about and they give their opinions and they're excited about it if it's going to get made or not. And you know, most of the time it doesn't because that's how Hollywood is. And so they see, you know, all the work that goes in and then sometimes you don't, but you got to put hundred percent in and you're not always going to get it back. Right. And they see that in a very real time scenario. So I've, it, the, the guilt, the mom guilt has definitely dissipated a lot for me. Like, I don't even know if I have it anymore. You know, I'm definitely the mom where I'm like, you're not going to have the perfect costume because it's just like not a super priority or yes, I'm going to forget your lunch sometimes. And you're going to have to figure it out at school. You're going to have to ask your teachers. You're going to have to maybe ask your friends. You're going to have to. And so it makes them figure things out on their own. Self-reliant too. I will tell you, Melinda, I have my daughter, Lauren, who's seven. Like she is such an independent soul. I was a single mom with her for three years. And then since then, she's always seen me work. And it was so cute the other day. She says to me, mom, I want to be a boss. How do I become a boss? You know, it was just, it was so cute because she sees me doing what I love. And you're right. I might not volunteer as much. I might not get it all right. But you know what? She sees me doing something I'm really passionate about. And so when she says that to me, it was just so hard for me. It was so cute. How do I become a boss? That's so amazing. Melinda, let's go back to how you became a boss. Um, yeah. You have had this fascination with jewelry for a very long time. Now, we only have so much time in this interview. Um, I was so fortunate to sit down with you for like an hour at Brilliant and your story is exactly that. It is so inspiring. It's so brilliant. You're super dope. I am using Melinda's word right now. She brought it back to me. Um, but let's, let's for those people who don't know where you started, it is really easy to look at you now and go, of course, she's gorgeous. She had this all together. She grew up with tons of money. Like we make stories up of people all the time, right? right. So, so take us back to yours. Oh my gosh, where I started? Yeah. Um, well, I started, I would say like, I mean, I started really young, you know, I was 10 or so, eight, 10, I can't remember somewhere around there, like making jewelry and fell in love with it. Um, there was a long period of time where I would just, you know, I would just make it, I would save my money, um, from babysitting and holiday things, birthday money and whatnot. And I would go down to the bead store and it just really became my obsession. Mm. And so cut to, you know, I moved to LA with I didn't know anybody. I didn't know, you know, really. Yeah. I didn't know anybody. <laughs> and how old were you at that time when you finally took the move? I, I, my move. timeline is so bad. Um, I think after I high like, school, of, of three, course, like early know, I had moved to New York after high school, then I had moved to back to LA, um, Spokane. And then I moved to Seattle for a bit. And then I moved here. I think I was like 23, something like that. Okay. And I was always making jewelry. Um, and I would just, you know, sell it here and there. I would, I was like a makeup artist. So I would sell it to people that I was doing their makeup and whatever. And then my husband who was then my boyfriend, he was like, you need to pick one thing and be really good at it. It's like, I, he's like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute here. He said, you have to pick one thing and be good at it. How did that feel at the time? Um, overwhelming, but exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It was scary. so much of what I, had, I tell our clients, just you pick know, one make a thing. Commitment. Yeah. You know, you make a commitment. Yeah. Yeah. That can be a scary uh, thing. Yeah. Super scary. Um, so, um, then what? Oh, and then but you did, oh, you did pick the thing. Yeah, I did. did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And then I started to, um, schlep my stuff around Starbucks and like, I was like working and making jewelry at all different kinds of Starbucks and people would buy, I mean, my jewelry from where they got the drinks and things like that. And 
I slowly realized. You didn't even have to rent the space. Just sit no. down with the Starbucks no, and people because come to you. No, have money to rent the So there wasn't yeah. an option, but I was like, how do I get to more people? And I love Starbucks at the time. Now, <laughs> now I am a Cafe Lux person. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, then it just started rolling. And then I started being like, okay, well, I would meet people at Starbucks. And they're like, oh, my friends would love, my friends loved those earrings. Can I make one for my friend? I'm like, yeah. And so it started like, you know, this snowball effect. And then I started having little like get togethers at my house, my crappy little apartment. People were so <laughs> nice to go there and, you know, having them invite their friends and then it became, you know, so it was like a slow burn, but like it started happening. And then I started to be able to have money for, um, you know, for, um, like in my own room in my apartment. So like, if I was sharing a room and then I could, then the second person moved out in the second bedroom and then I could get her room. And so it, you know, it was slow burn, but it was like such an exciting time. It's like, yeah. those times were just as exciting as when like, I have, you know, Jennifer Lopez wear stuff or Michelle Obama or whoever wears it now, but just different, but still exciting that I was able to pay my bills doing what I love. Right. That's an amazing thing where you're like, okay, I can actually have my own apartment and pay my yeah, bills. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Melinda, like, I'm what successful. was I'm successful. <laughs> right. I, I can do it. I mean, the, the jewelry space is so saturated and in, oh God, so with sad. the women I work with, you know, there's always the fear of someone's already doing it. Someone's already successful. Yeah. What was, and now, first of all, I love that you were scrappy. I just want to go back to that. Like it was whatever it takes. I'm doing this bit by bit. It sounds a little bit like a fairy tale, although I know it wasn't for you. Was there a tipping point? What was like the catalyst? Did you ever, did you ever have that, that fear or was it just, I'd love to do this. So I'm just all in. I know I just I asked you a ton like, of questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was more like, I have no other choice. This mm. is my only thing that I love doing and that I want to do. That's it. I loved makeup too. I did love being a makeup artist, but I felt like that was hard for some reason. It's like, uh, it, I was just having a hard time getting traction, like getting consistent work and mm -hmm. The jewelry sort of took off a little more and I, I loved it more. Um, so yeah. So what was, what was the tipping point for you and how did you go from making your own jewelry to getting, you know, it distributed into the stores that it is? I'm just curious about that little part yeah. of your story. Cause I think for a long time, whether you're a candle maker, you make soap, you're yeah, an incredible, you know, your yeah, you, you do it on your own first. And then you're like, well, crap, I can't continue to, you know, yeah, yeah I think unless you have a, you know, or raising capital, you have to do it slowly and bootstrap because you don't have the money. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, t you know, the term tipping point is a funny one, I think, because you can point to things. It's like, well, what is a tipping point for somebody? What it's, that means different things for different people. I also think like you can have a tipping point, but then what do you do afterwards? It could either tip over. That, that could also tip you right could, over. Yeah. 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 It could tip right over or, um, so I find that I don't, you know, there are moments that have been like definitive sort of in the, in the, you know, in the trajectory of my career. Um, but I think that there are, there's no tipping point. There wasn't like one get thing. Sick. There's yeah. always going to be, it's always a grind. Like I yeah. still am grinding. I, I still feel like I'm grinding and I have, you know, a multi, 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 multi million dollar company and many, 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 many employees. And um, I am still grind like hell. I wake up every day and I'm like, oh, there's so much to do. There is so yeah. much to do. Or you know, I appreciate you saying that because I feel like in the beginning you grind and you're really scrappy and then you reach a certain level. And I, I feel that right now. When I have multiple multi millions yet we will be but you know just to know that that never really stops so you better love what you do oh. because the grind is different right now you're managing team you're managing yeah, you know, a production grind. lines and manufacturing it's it's a different yeah. grind it's right? a different grind but i'm still feel like i'm scrappy i don't feel as brute as bootstrapped i feel like you know obviously we have more like you know resources play with yeah. and resources but it's like 
I still am at this level and I'm grinding at this level because now my overhead is at this level. And so I still, so, you know, it, it, what's more exciting now, 17 years later, I want to tell people 17 years 17, later, I, I'm not saying it took me that long to be profitable and to you know, be able to, to grow differently, but like, you know, we're able to, I don't know, I sort of lost my train of thought. It, it's, it's just never stops. It yeah. never, ever, it just doesn't stop. So like, if people think, oh, well, like when I get to here, X, Y, Z is going to be like this. It doesn't. If you, if you want to grow and stay relevant, you have to, you have to grind. Yeah. Let's talk about that. I love that too. Relevance. How do you keep your brand relevant? How do you have you know, like this massive celebrity following? I know Julia Roberts, you know, wore your, your bracelets on Oprah's, was it Oprah's favorite things? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was Julia's favorite things. It was Julia's yeah. favorite things. That's a good <laughs> list to get on. So yeah. how did you build that? I mean, we talk so much about networking and community and you have a tribe of diehard fans and followers. What were some of the keys that you did to build that Melinda? Oh my God. So long. It's just like a blur. <laughs> was it you deciding to be the face? Was it you being consistent with like showing up? How did I build my tribe? Customer yeah. service. I know it's yeah, really yeah, important yeah. to you. I think, I think that my tribe was like my community, my returning customers, my people that fell in love with the brand. The, that becoming the face of the brand was a huge I guess that would be a massive tipping point in our business. Yes. If I really think about one thing, like, yes. Do I have a million celebrities wearing it? Yes. We were on Oprah. There's a lot of like big things, but I think making the commitment for me and you realizing like, Oh, like people enjoy, like, I'm sort of funny. I'm relatable, but like, I have a, I guess I have a cool sense of style and it's fairly aspirational. Um, yeah, your I style also, is incredible. <laughs> like but looking like, at you right now. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, this is my friend from Andrea's lookbook. She's my she's my friend that's a stylist, so I just copy whatever she does. Um, but I think that like that was definitely a tipping point. In that, I wanted to speak to my customer. I wanted to be able to have a direct voice to them. And you know, I think that anyone listening out there, I think that if you are able to speak your truth and your passion, a uh, passion about what you're doing to a customer. Even if you think that you're not like, you don't need to be like this bubbly entertainer. Like not everyone yeah. wants to hear me spaz out. Like I <laughs> turn a lot of people off and I'm okay with that, but that's who I am. So you don't need to be this like crazy, like amazing personality, just someone speaking their truth and their passion about what they're doing. Mm, so Give good. context and like um, validity to understand the product that you're creating. Yeah, so speaking your truth yeah. and being you, I think that is so important. And Melinda, when you decided, cause you couldn't afford a model at the time, right? And you're like, well, here I am. I guess I'm the yeah, face. Take did, it or you leave have, it. did you have take it or leave it? Love it or not. <laughs> um, did you have any fear around that at the time? Or was it like, okay, I got this. Like, how did you I had deal been doing with like the fear of judgment or people not yeah. liking you? Um, I think I was very blessed and I was born with like, a listen, do I care about what people think? Do they, do I care if they think I'm a good person? Yes. Because I think that's important. Do I care if people think that like my outfit looks dumb or I'm being annoying? Not really. No. So I think I was blessed with that. And I just always was like, I, I am who I am. And if you don't like it, then that's okay. A lot of people like me. So I think I was from a very young age, I was very blessed with that. Um, and I always tell people starting a business, like, Oh, I'm so worried people are going to think, or like, yeah, I'm going to be on Instagram and I'm like, I look stupid. I mean, you have to be okay with what you're saying and what you're doing. And but like the chatter of like worrying about what people are going to say, like, yes, they're going to make fun of you and people are going to be judgmental. I always say that to people. I said mm -hmm. that once on your, you know, on your panel, um, just know that that's going to happen. And like, I don't know, like it feels kind of better to have a successful business than like worry, <laughs> like be so worried about what somebody's saying in their stupid little 
like chair and they're behind their screen, not doing anything, not even, they're not even in the, the game. They're not even the in game. the game. Yeah, right, right. You're in the they're game. They're not even playing. For yeah. Potential to win and to gain something. They're not even on the field. So who yeah. cares? That's right, ladies. Remember that. Who cares? I think yeah. that's so important to speak your truth, be you. You don't have to be anything that you're not. You don't have to try to be anything. But I think that is one of the things that has made you so successful is that you show up. You're super generous to your fans, to your community. Like people don't know just how big of a heart, like you will literally drive around and like give away free jewelry. Yeah, and so you know, you're doing your Instagram so lives where you're giving away stuff. So has that been a part to of building your brand and keeping it relevant is like how much you give or were there other things? Like how do you keep the brand in front of your audience and make it relevant? Because I feel like things change so quick. Oh my God. I don't know. Am I relevant? I don't know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I, I, think, I think your sales, your sales tell you, I think you're doing okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, God, how do I, I guess I just like always follow my instinct. Like I, I think I'm a pretty good jewelry designer. I think I'm a pretty good understanding of what is cool mm -hmm. and what I think is cool. And so I, I think for me staying, staying relevant is making sure that I'm explaining like what I think is great and exciting and cool. And, um, so I guess I just, I'm sort of listening to my own instincts about it. Yeah. That's and great. Sometimes it doesn't work. Like, I mean, I don't know half the time my posts, people don't, that's not, doesn't get great engagement as compared to like what we're used to. So you know, there's also that, like, there's also putting stuff out there and knowing like, oh, well, maybe this is going to fall flat. And sometimes it still does. And so, you keep you know, doing it anyway. You yeah. Keep you don't doing get, it anyway. to a, you never yeah. get to a level and you're like, oh, great. I'm here. And now I'm sailing above the clouds. It doesn't happen. <laughs> it so doesn't happen. you don't love what you're doing now and you're having a small amount of success. Like, I don't know what to tell you because it never stops. Yeah. What do you do on the days that you have scheduled to film and you don't feel like it? Ugh, I just have to do it. Yeah. Haven't you just do I it anyway? Guess what? I never want to film. And people <laughs> got so crazy because they're like, but you're so good at it. You're so amazing. I'm like, I know I am more, even though I'm an extrovert, I'm also, an, I'm an extroverted introvert and so much. I would rather be designing. My favorite part of the business is designing. Um, yeah, I don't want to film like 95% of the time. Sometimes if I like, oh, I'm looking pretty good and I like, I have an idea of what we're filming and I think it's really funny. Like I'll like it, but no, I, I. But you do it anyway, every week. Anyhow, because I know it's what's good for the business. All right, and, ladies, you know, I needed I'm you to done, hear that. I needed you to hear like, that. It's yeah. sort of like working out. It's like, after I'm done, if we did a good job and I like it, I'm like, Oh, I'm so glad we did that. That's great. That's actually so funny. I can't wait to post that. Yeah. But like, yeah, yeah it's stressful. It's pressure. It's like, ugh, do I look weird? Is it like, you know, it's more of like, I never think like, are people going to like it? I'm more of like, do I feel good about what I'm putting out? Yeah. So I, I always the same way for that. Yeah. And it's never like, even if I think people are going to like it and I don't like it, I have a hard time putting it out there. Yeah. Totally understand yeah. that. Um, and just a great reminder that even when you don't feel like it, ladies, you got to show up. You got to show up for your community. Yeah. You got to be the one who markets and you don't have to be, but, but Melinda, you made that choice. And I think that's a huge reason, reason why your e-commerce goes through the roof and yeah. your following continues to grow because you're showing up consistently and you're being who you are, which I yeah. think is awesome. Like we do, we do uh, live at five where we have the segment we, we bring people on our lives and we, I style them, we give it away. And it's, it used to be every Thursday, but I was like, I just can't, it's too much. And so I whittled it back to it's, it's every other Thursday. And it's, it happens every Thursday, you know, 4 30 or 4 15. My assistant emailed me or texts me because I'm, I'm usually here by then on Thursdays at home. And she's like, okay, getting ready for live. Are you getting ready for live five? I'm like, uh, <laughs> I have the energy today. And I always show up. And then usually when I get on, I'm like, oh, this is great. And I love it these. It feels so good. 
yeah. and it feels so good. And I love all these stories. And, you know, every once in a while we'll get somebody, I'm like, oh, well, she doesn't seem happy to be here. Like, why is she, why is she come on? <laughs> and that's annoying. But like, I, I love it when they're so excited. It's awesome. And yeah. then the end, I'm always like, oh, I'm so glad I did that. That was so fun. All right, ladies, yeah. you heard it. Show up consistently. Yeah go serve your audience. Melinda, yeah. what was, what has been like one of the greatest lessons that you have learned when it comes to building Melinda Maria? Maria, um, shit. Uh, <laughs> one of the greatest lessons I've learned. Uh, you can name a few if you have a few. It, yeah. I would definitely say one is like to stay true, to just make sure you're being authentic, make sure you're, you're like, putting out something that, that you really love, or like, I don't put out anything. I almost, my collections, I almost wear every single piece in it. Sometimes I'm like, oh, this isn't for me, but like, I know somebody, one of my customers will love it. But for me, it's super important to design things that I will wear all of them. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I, uh, there was a point where I would like for, I was very big at Nordstrom and I was designing uh, pieces for the North, for who I thought the Nordstrom customer was. And that did not, did not work. That. No, yeah. didn't work. It was really bad. Um, yeah, I would say your instincts and then also just surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. <laughs> True that team yeah. advisors. Yeah. I think some mentors. people are, worried. yeah, I think some people are worried to, you know, have people, they don't want to listen to people that, you know, probably have more experience than them. And, you know, and I, I'm not always right. I definitely, even with like, st like the other day, my, we were putting out some like a text and so it went to all of our customers and I was like, no, 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 no. I definitely think that this needs to be like this card, this needs to be on the photo. Like you got it. You know, I really believe this. And my CEO had seen it. He's like, I just don't, I just don't think it looks great. And he's like, I was like, well, why don't we AB test it? So, which means like we put a yeah. service we split to a test it. Yeah. Split test it to a really small amount of people for the first time it went out and he was right. And I was wrong and I couldn't believe it. So <laughs> I, I tend to be really stubborn and really like my, my blinders on and like, no, 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 this like creatively, like, this is what, this is what needs to happen. And so I need to sort of, I've learned that I need to take back and really get everyone's opinion. Um, so that was a lesson for me because, you know, I was, I was so my way, right. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. 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 I'm not perfect. I try to be as a good a person I am, but like, I'm flawed. I, you know, have bad days. I, you know, I generally wake Melinda, up. And... Are you a human? Cause I don't know. Sometimes you look superhuman. <laughs> we're we're well, human. I mean, yeah. You know, I guess Instagram and social media is kind of weird like that. And I should probably show a little more of the tougher things. That might actually be really interesting of like, I, I think that's a great idea. Horrible day today. And this is what happened. And here's, you know, the I guarantee I you, your engagement would go through the roof because right. people like, and I say this to my clients so much, Melinda, like people admire when you're all put together and you look like, you know, a million bucks and you're talking yeah. about the success, they admire that, but they can't always relate to that. And I think when right. we share the bad days, it's like, oh my God, she's human too. She bleeds. That's amazing. Right. <laughs> right? I'm not alone. I think right. that's actually really inspiring when people do that. So I say, go for it. Yeah. 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 It's funny. <laughs> I do. I mean, I do, but I just feel like when I'm on my live at fives, like I really am that like bubbly and happy and da, 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 da. But I'm like, I have days where I'm not like that. Like I'm I generally am like that, but like, I also yeah. have days where I'm like, you know, maybe short with somebody or I don't know. I think people look to the boss to be like perfect. And it's, mm -hmm. it's hard. It's a hard it role. Hard. It's hard, especially at the level you are with the amount of team that you have. I'm curious, Melinda, when, I mean, how you have a lot of employees right now, how do you manage that, that, um, bringing the core values to your team? Um, and I think so much of what you've built around Melinda Maria and keeping jewelry affordable and glamorous and all the things, is there something consciously that you do to continue to build team and to get your core values out in the marketplace? Or has that been just kind of like trial and error when it comes to building your team? I mean, building team is hard. I mean, when, especially when you get harder, when you get bigger, 
you know, different personalities mix different ways. And, you know, it's really hard. That's probably one of the hardest things of the business is that. Um, but, you know, I think in general, like we, the core is like, Hey, everyone work hard. We'll treat each other with respect and you do your job and we do ours and we come together collectively and grow the company together and everyone, you know, celebrates. So, you know, there's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's internally, that's how it is. I mean, externally, we definitely treat our customers like they're a part of the team. Like they have a little insight to like what happens at the company, um, who people are. Um, We like to sort of be transparent that way. Like who, you know, who, what roles or who, you know, who, and yeah. some people want to be camera, some people don't. Um, and that we want to just always bring like amazing, affordable luxury to people and I'm trying to think what else, the, another point I was trying to make, um, da, 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 da. what were you saying about the customer? Team oh, oh and then the yeah. customer is, I know what the point I was trying to make. Um, the customer is, you know, always like, number one, numero uno, your best friend, like that is just so in our blood and in, in everything we do, whether it's social media, the customer service, like how we service people, um, you know, how we treat people on Instagram and like our lives and what have you, um, surprising people on the streets. Like, it's just like a happiness, you know, lifetime happiness guaranteed if you're yeah. part of this community type of thing. Lifetime happiness guarantee. I love that. And if something breaks, like you'll fix it. Yeah. You said now you said it have... brilliant. Like you own a oh, customer yeah. service company as much as you own a, ju- a jewelry brand. Yeah. Well, right? now we have um, a, a, a life, what we call it a, uh, a lifetime happiness guaranteed. So our products are, they used to be a two-year warranty. Now they're a lifetime. So if anything wow. breaks or anything like that, it is guaranteed for life. That's a big promise, girl. I love it's that. Insane. And I, I'm wearing all your bling today. I love it so much. Okay. Um, so good. Can't, can't recommend your stuff enough. And it's like so light and it's just, you feel like a million bucks when you're wearing it. Yeah, um, I want to know, Miss Melinda, what does inspired living mean to you? God, inspired living, inspired living. What does inspired living mean to me? I think it changes, honestly, like recently I had this discussion with my husband when we're working from home, because we also work at night. Like I have a designer that I have to work with overseas that I hop on at 10 PM Mm. and I'm working at least a few nights a week with her a couple hours, um, from like 10 to 12. So it's funny. I turned to my husband, we were dropped the kids off and it was one of the days that we work from home and we both work from home together. And we were, I was doing a Pilates at like eight o'clock and he was going on a walk or something. And then we got back together and we were like having breakfast together and it was 9am. And I was like, this is so inspiring to me of what Mm -hmm. I want our balance to be like. Mm -hmm. So just recently an, an, an inspirational part of my day was being able to drop the kids off, have breakfast at them, come back, being able to serve myself in the wellness space and, and doing, I love Pilates. So do my Pilates and then have a quick breakfast with my husband, like together by ourselves in the, our beautiful home that we built, um, was like everything this, I, and and like, you know, in the, in the breakfast, we were talking about, you know, business, but like, I was like, this is amazing. This is awesome. Just to have that space. I'll tell you, my husband and I both work from home and there will be days we don't even see each other. It's like, who are you? Where are you? And I so appreciate those moments. They don't happen enough, but I think inspired living is finding those moments, right? Finding those moments to be inspired and be connected. So I love that. Yeah, totally. Thanks, Melinda. Well, I just have to say congratulations on all that you've done. I just think you're a really amazing human who creates beautiful stuff. And, you know, just a reminder for the ladies out there that, you know, Melinda started off with nothing. You know, she built her line from scratch um, and, you know, she's built it into, you know, the multi eight figure business that it is today. And 
So just if she can do it, you can do it. And it's the commitment too to being visible, to showing up when you don't feel like it, to schedule those video days once a week, to really build community. Whether you have a product-based business or a service-based business, remember there's only one of you. So put yourself yeah. out there. And Melinda, you do that so well. Thank you so much for your time Thank today. You. Thank you. This was so fun. I mean, appreciate you. you inspire me. I love being on here. Look at you. You just tracked me down at a event that I was at. I didn't know who you were. And you were like putting yourself out there to be set up to me say no. And you did it anyhow. And look That's at right. Look that here. is right. And I just have to say, for those of you who don't know that story, I was looking for a speaker for Brilliant because I love someone representing the product space. We have a lot of service business people out there and I like, I love products. I love the story behind products. I'm like, who am I going to have? And there was an event coming up and I saw Melinda was there and I went as, you know, I bought my ticket. It was freaking hot in LA. I'm dripping. So and I remember I was so like hot. scouting, like, I'm like, who, who do I think would be good? And I heard you on a panel and I loved how real and authentic you were and the story was so great and so literally i'm standing by you're finishing up you're walking out to the parking lot to your car and i'm literally walking behind you like excuse me <laughs> and it just goes to show you like you got to be scrappy you got to be willing yeah. to show up you have to be willing to go find the people because people aren't going to find you unless you're willing to put yourself out there and then of course here we are today so yeah. i appreciate that. and and be okay with like yeah you're going to be rejected too and that's okay yeah she could have said no. Rejected. I still like, I can't get Haley Bieber to wear my hoops. I don't know how hard I've tried. And it's <laughs> one day it's going to happen. She's worn or a pair. She's of just not your right fit client. And you're going to buy someone more fabulous. She is. She is. <laughs> <laughs> she is. <laughs> It'll happen. It'll happen. All right, cool. um, she's worn a pair of Huggies, but no, no hoops. So anyhow. Um, all right. Well, it was so great to chat with you. I so appreciate you inviting me on and I'm, I'm impressed by you. Thank you. You're appreciate welcome. You. Yeah. All, all right. right. So okay. go to Melinda Maria, uh, com and make sure to follow her on Instagram. I love how she shows up. Um, it is beautiful. It is inspiring. And she has a pretty amazing community and Melinda Instagram is Melinda Maria too. Correct. Yeah, I think it's Melinda Maria Jewelry, but you type in Melinda Maria and it pops up. You'll see it. Beautiful purple. So, all right. Have a gorgeous day. Okay, bye, girl. All right, bye-bye.